All right, good evening, folks. Welcome to CIS 137. Today I'm going to be walking you through Lab uh, 7, Lab 6 of uh, CIS 137 Linux Operation System. All right, so let's uh, get started. So always uh, I like to open two screens, right? One for the lab, what I'm going to do the command, and then uh, one for the uh, instructions, right? So this lab is all about permissions, right? It's all about controlling access to files and then uh, permissions and stuff like that. But before we go into permissions and then accessing to file, so I would like to show you a presentation about uh, how things work in a binary versus decimal, right? That way you understand what we're doing when it comes to um, uh, lab five, okay? So let me show the PowerPoint really quick. I uh, have it right here. So let me go to slideshow from current slides, okay? So it's all about user group and permissions, and we want to do a little bit of overview of that, okay? So in Linux, there is uh, three placeholders when it comes to permissions, right? The first one is a dedicated for owner, so the owner of the file, okay? Group, and then uh, everyone else, okay? So you will have two spaces. Sometimes that's why you see sometime when you you have a Linux uh, command line, you will see R W X stuff like that. R W X and then dot 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 and the R W X. We'll explain that in a minute. So the first one is a, a placeholder for the owner of the file, group of the file, and then everyone else who is touching the file, right? So R W X for the owner means that you're giving the owner the read, write, and, and execute. R means read, W means uh, write, and X means execute, all right? Okay. So when you do that, you're telling everyone else to read, write, and execute. You're telling the group to read and write and execute, and you're telling the owner to read and write and execute, right? So X is execute, W is write, R is read, right? Okay. Three placeholders. Okay. So, and then the command to grant access or revoke access is a sudo. Of course, you have to be super, super user do, right? <clears throat> and then schmode. Okay. And then uh, whatever the number will be, it can be 354777. We'll explain what that means. So, there will be a number and then the file name, right? Okay. So, sudo schmode the permission number, and then the file. Now, how do we know the permission number? How do we understand all that? So let's uh, make a table that explains things from uh, decimal all the way to binary and what it means in terms of Linux code, right? So here's a table. Look at the far left of the table, okay? This one that says decimal. Easy to make, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because uh, it's a octal decimal, so octal decimal, so right? So eight digits, right? So zero all the way to seven, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on the first column. And then in binary, remember I said that we have a read, write, and execute, right? For the read, for the for this, the read column, all you need to do is the push four zeros, Zero 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 zero, followed by it, four ones, one 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 one, and then the next one for W we do two zeros, two ones, and then two zero two ones. And then for execute we do one zero one, zero one zero one zero one, right? And now lab, let's go to the last column and then do the Linux interpretation. So as you can see here. In this row right here, R is set up to be zero, W is set up to be zero, X is set up to be zero. Zero means that you're not granting permission, right? So there's no permission for reading, there's no permission for writing, there's no permission for executing, so there's no permission at all, right? But here, the only place you have one is execute. That means that we have execute only permission. Here, the only place you have one is uh, W, which is write, write only. 
and then here the only place you have uh, is a uh, w and x so write and execute and so on okay so that's how we pass from decimal to binary and the interpretation in linux pretty simple right okay so everywhere you see seven that means that we uh, we have a what reading writing execute permission you see six it means a writing reading only no execution permission right so if you know this table you know everything about permissions now let's go to the next slides and then uh, interpret that more all right so now let me go to the command line okay and then use those okay all right so let's open up uh, the command line so log into foundation all right and then uh, click in anywhere and then log into kiosk as a red hat all right and now uh, we'll uh, find the activity we go to the command line and then what do we do first we start all the machines so rhd vm ctl start all all right boom so server a server b we wait for those server to open right so let me go to uh, lab instruction all right so we'll SSH into workstation as a student. So a student at workstation as usual, right? And then uh, it will uh, it will take some time to log us in because uh, it takes time for the server to power on, right? Get some water while it's doing that. Yep, do it again. All right, now we are in there. <clears throat> in there, we need to do what? We need to start the lab, right? So lab, what's the name of the lab? Lab, uh, let's uh, perms, so lab uh, mission, mission view. Start. Okay, mission review start. lab mission review start start the lab <clears throat> so successfully started and then uh, our next move is gonna be to go into server b right so, so ssh student server b all right good we are in server b so we want to go in there as a sudo so su dash Password is going to be Red Hat. Okay, so we are in server B, okay, as a root, right? Okay, so the first thing we want to do in there is to create a directory, right? So we want to create a directory called Home Tech Docs, okay? So make directory, D home slash tech docs. We make that directory, and then uh, the next one we want to do is uh, remember. So we want to we want to change the group ownership of the home tech directory to the tech docs group, right? The group now is going to be tech docs. So to do that is a shown change owner. So shown means change owner, right? Shown space. right and then um, boom so we did that so we we changed that okay so the next thing we want to do in bullet four of the instruction is uh, now that we want to verify that user in the tech group group can create an edit file right so let's do that so sudo so let's log in as a tech one Tech one. Okay, so tech one at server B, right? So we log in at the tech one. What we want to do is uh, we want to use the we want to create a file called tech one 
techdoc1.txt file, all right? So the command is touch, right? Touch, you can create a file, so touch, space, owner, okay? Box, okay? And then what? And then techdocs, one.txt, okay? So the file name is techdoc1.txt. Create under that directory, okay? All right, so that happens a lot when you when you lose that when you, we do touch and then it doesn't work. So home, take dogs, take dogs. So let me make sure. So it says permission denied, which makes sense, right? Because we have not granted anyone from that group the access to create any file, right? So we need to grant that access before we do that. So that's good, what it's doing. Now, let's take a look at the access that the tech dog has. To do that, you do ls ld, okay, and then uh, home, okay, tech docs. So we want to see what is the group access for people, the people in tech docs, for the group, okay? Take a look at that, good. So it shows a D, D mean directory, right? And then uh, you see R, W, so you see directory, W, X, R. W, X, R, so it means that uh, you have a writing, executing, reading. So that's, uh, and then you have dash, you see dash, X, R. So that means that, dash means there's nothing. So it means that we don't have a, a reading, execu uh, writing execution, right? We don't have a writing, uh, um, uh, permission here okay and then here has dash x we don't have a uh, reading and writing okay so two root tech docs okay and then it shows the the date okay so now let's ground those access okay okay so we did that so let's exit go back as a root and then let's issue those access okay boom all right so remember the schmode command. We want to issue permission from the PowerPoint. You do schmode space. You put the number. Now our number here is going to be two seven seven zero. The first number is uh, the user ID. Okay, is the ID. Okay, and then the three numbers that we care about here are the seven seven zero. Remember what I say in the PowerPoint. The first seven give me one, one, one. So I means I'm having the right access, okay, W. And then the next seven is for reading. So that's one, one, one. And then the last one is for execution. So I'm giving the writing and reading, but I'm not giving execution, okay? And then the group ID is two, okay? That's what it means. So 2770, and then uh, assign to anyone in this group, Homer. All right. See, so when you look at the the comment, the comment here, it says on the home directory configure set GID so group ID to two. So read, write, and execute permission. That's seven. Okay, and then uh, for the owner, remember the first place is for owner. So the owner has a read, write, and execute. And then the next one is a seven. So the, you have owner, you have the group, and you have what? Everyone else. The owner has seven, all the access. The group has seven, all the access. And then uh, everyone else has zero. That means in, in everyone else beside the group and the owner does not have any access. Okay? That's what it means. And then when you do that, you grant that access, right? Now, let's see that, what happened with the, uh, the RWX. Okay, so ls ld and then the homer and uh, tech docs. Alright, see, so it shows a uh, rwh rwh and then the rest is dash dash dash. Okay, so rws the, the the d remember the d means that directly right. Rws the first one is seven, so we have r, we have w and x. Read, write, execute for the owner, and then read, write, execute for who? For the 
group and then we have dash 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 nothing else for the for anyone else okay okay so when you know that table that i show you on the powerpoint you're good to go on permissions all right so let's move on to anything else that is down the road that's we are in seven now right seven now let's confirm that everything we granted there is working just fine so we do soon we back to tech one right soon so we log in back as a tech one so let me go back to the introduction okay as a tech one sudo okay server oh yeah I need a space in there two space deck one two invalid okay we need a space right okay we don't do space it will be wrong okay so we are in there as a tech one after we do that we will touch right we will create a file Okay, so let me bring home directory because I don't want to type too much. So and then I will fix this thing, right? Right. So tech docs slash tech doc one uh, text, and then I'll go here lsld. I take it out and then uh, okay. so I'm creating. A, so I log in as a tech one into server B, and I try to create a file in there to see if I'm allowed to do that. Remember, tech one is part of what? The group. And we granted access to anyone in that group, right? Okay, so touch home, tech dog, blah, blah, blah. There we go, now it took it, okay? That because we granted that access to the group, right? It took it. Now let's go to LSL and then see what is in there. Um, And then tech doc on txt. Okay. As you can see, right? So the owner, okay, read right, okay, read right, and then uh, read dash dash dash. Okay. Good. So that's how you can interpret from your Linux to the 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 numbers right decimal and then the binary we're good so lsl is in there now let's exit from tech one and then uh let's go back and then log in uh, as a second tech two. two so we log in as a tech two okay and then uh, we change directory into home Okay, tech docs. In directory into those. Okay, and then we are in uh, that directory right now. Okay, remember the echo. Echo means we want to write into that directory. Okay, so echo. Right. This is. This is. First. And then we close the code, pointing to where. So we write it into where the file, and then we have to specify the file name, which is a tech doc one text. Remember, we create that file, and then we are writing it into that file, right? So we log in into the directory tech docs, and then uh, because that file is located into that directory, we're trying to write it into that, right? We want to see if we have the right permission, right? To write into that file, right? Boom, we take it, right? Then exit. Okay. Come back to root. So because uh, we have, uh, we granted the owner and the group execution, writing and what? And reading. So we just show that we can write into the file, okay? Which is good. Now, 7.3, what we want to do is uh, we want to switch to database one user, 
by using uh, the echo okay to write down into that so let's go back uh, as a student uh, as a database one so su database one okay database one database one okay so database one is logged into that server and then echo will write into that so echo this is this is uh, the first check back again. All right, and then we close that. Remember, every time we want to go to the second line, slash, and then it will point into where home is directly to the right. Docs and then tech doc on text. Okay. Here we go. It says bash home permission denied, right? Okay, because uh, we have not granted that permission. And then let's go ahead and uh, grant that permission. So let's get out. Grant that permission in the eight. All right. So you go back into sudo student student um, eight. I'm going back to eight. Okay, student student. There we go. So last login. We are in there as a. Let me request more time. Okay. All right, so we are in there as a student, okay? UMask, let's take a look at the UMask for student. Okay? Student has UMask of uh, 0002, okay? Now we want to be able to change that UMask, okay? Okay, so we see that UMask, let's change it to exit. So change that UMask, we have to be root, okay? We are root, okay? Remember, we can write into a file by using on the command. We can use echo. We can use a, and then we can use a cat. We can use a vim. Okay, it's, it's up to you. So here I can use a vim. So let's try with a cat and see if it works. If it doesn't work, no big deal. Use the vim, but I will just use the vim. So vim, uh, etc. And we will create that for you profile. Yeah. E slash local e mask and then dot sh. Yeah. So use I would recommend you use the VIM. It will open up your file and then write down that code in there, right? So let's do let's go to oh yeah, do I right, which allow you to insert. Okay, and then override, override, override default. You mask duration. Okay. So if you fell in this lab, use a VIM. It's just gonna work just fine. Configuration. Okay, you mask configuration, and then now we have a if command right there. So we're telling the system that if uh, the user ID, remember UID, UID, if the user ID, okay, is between 199, okay, and, okay, ID, okay, one put, so ID, all right equal to all right id un okay user id so the end is a group id if the group id is equal to the user id okay we close that, okay, and then uh, we close that. So then, so if that, then 
it, it, it did the indentation right away. So you mask as zero zero seven. So anytime we have that change, the U match to zero zero seven. Otherwise, otherwise else, in the U mask to zero twenty two. And then if okay. let's take a look at the program real well and then make sure the if is do so user ID GT9199 and then end okay ID group uh, maybe equal to ID okay all right make sure everything is correct mm -hmm. yeah we look good and then exit and then uh, shift okay colon wq enter and then you get out so we use the beam and then get, a, get away with that and then uh, let's exit okay let's exit the root come back to student let's exit the student as well and then come back to the workstation right and then in that workstation i'm going to go back to server b ssh Okay, student at server B. Okay. Great. You see, it says bash. So ID command uh, not found. So let me go back to that uh, VIM. Okay, let me go back to the root. Okay, so SSH. Uh, so we get him back in there as a root right so su student as a server b we are in server b right now i want to be a root remember how we started right all right so we can do sudo right so su dash and then login as a red hat okay, and then I, i'm going to open back uh, that file so vim okay. etc okay. those are the mistakes that can fail the lab that means we did a typo inside the file a d okay local you may ask dot sh all right let's fix it okay let's go back to the back to the uh, comment all right for the code okay so uids tt199 and okay id oh yeah this is uh, the one this is not the type of uh, code you use so i okay i'm going back inside there it's pretty sensible right so this guy right here, this curly one, this one, so you go to your left, from the left, so you see the escape, the one at the bottom, the escape, you click on that, that's the one we want for it. And then when you close this one as well, you do the same thing, that's the one we want, okay? And then we come back here, we do the same thing, that's the one we want. And then that one. Okay. And then exit and then WQ. Come. Okay. And remember when we did that, we exit. Okay. And then we exit again. Okay. So we close the connection to the server B and then uh, we log in back as a student, right? SSH student. So yeah. All right, student at server B. Yep, we're there. Now let's see the UMass of student now. Boom, it's zero zero. 22 it should be zero it should be zero 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 seven if everything looks good let's do it again 
right? Otherwise, it will uh, fail you. Okay, so exit. So when we SSH student at server B, it says uh, activate the web console now, copy last login, and then say bash student command not found. Let's do it again. You mask. All right, so I'm going to go back in there. And uh, SSH. So it will be so sudo. Um, su red hat. Okay, so I'm in the server B as a root. And then let me use the VIM back. VIM etc profile at d slash local you may ask dot sh yeah something might be wrong in this okay so if so overwrite let's see over right oh yeah overwrite okay. interesting it's just a uh, cap loss o is a uh, Okay, so overwrite default you must configuration that's a comment okay so now we go to if okay if user id dt199 and uh, okay id minus gn okay all right equal All right, equal ID minus UN, then U max zero zero seven, else U max zero twenty two, and if let me make sure this is a twenty one ones, and then I close it. Right. Everything looks good. Exit. Probably key, right? Oh. Okay. So we did that. So log out of the shell and log back in as a student to verify that global UMass changes to 007. Okay, let's do that. So exit. Exit the server, the <coughs> Now we exit again. Connection to server closed. Okay. Now let's come back. SSH students at server B. Okay. Come back. It's in the student command not found. That's not good. Student, why is that command not found? SSA student at server B. Why station? student at server B. You get out again, exit. That's funny. I mean, there is a workstation. Allow me to get back in there. I mean, no foul. Ah. 
when not found by this login me in you mask Yeah, I am. default you mask uh, configuration if user ID TT199 and uh, oh yeah there's a space over here that's funny yeah so just make sure you write everything correctly right now This and the GN we close it ID UN space then you mask okay so let me come back here and change this guy right here and then this one as well and then uh, all right and then uh, escape thank you exit exit again okay and then come back ssh student what sorry Right, so now we log in successfully. It's just that little space, right? <laughs> it's a good troubleshoot. It was a good troubleshooting uh, exercise. All right, so let's log back in uh, into server B. So, and then uh, let's uh, type in UMask. See the UMask is 0007. Boom, you're done. Now we got to exit there and then see the grid for the lab, okay? <clears throat> So we exit, we come back as a, um, uh, into student uh, workstation, and then uh, we do lab. Let's go ahead and do that, lab, permissions, permits, view, great. Uh, right, because if you, if you don't lab, why am I doing that? It's a long day, guys. Okay. Then it pass because if it doesn't show you mass 007, it will fail you. So we good. So you got all the troubleshooting. If you fail in your lab, you know what to do. You go back to the file, make sure the spacings are correct, everything is look good. Okay. All right. And then uh, we take a screenshot by using a uh, Cinepin tool, okay, new, and then uh I like to see uh, your login credential, right? Okay, and then uh, we go to file, save as. I have a file somewhere for the CIS uh, document here, and then CIS 137, and then uh, I have the labs. I'm gonna call this one lab. Uh, um, uh, lab six. Okay. Lab six. All right, and then save it, and then uh, upload that onto D two L. All right, so that's all you need to know about lab six. So remember, first thing, know that table, decimal, binary. What does that mean in Linux? Okay, zero means no access. 
one means access, okay, for that. Three placeholders, right? Remember, owner, group, and what? Everyone else, all right? All right, guys, have a good day. If you have any questions, shoot me an email and or show up to my student hours on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. East Campus, room 01143 from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Back. All right, I'm back here and then stop the video.